I really don't know why the network engineers is always sitting in front of the laptop with a black screen window. For you, it is just a black screen, and for us, the network engineers, it is everything and we call it console connection. If you are a network engineer, is your non-IT colleagues or friends ever ask you this question? What are you doing with a black screen? Yes, this is a common question from non-IT people to the IT people. They are curious to know what these people are doing with this black screen all the time in a computer. Well, for them it is just a black screen, but as a network engineer for you, it is the major tool that help you to configure a network device in your own and it is called console connection. So in this chapter, I am going to show you how to configure a console connection in a computer. Welcome to CCNA 200-301, Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions, Chapter Number 35. How to configure a console connection in a computer. Learn CCNA with iRush Academy. I have placed the complete CCNA playlist at the top right corner of the video information bar. In this chapter, we will understand how to configure a console connection to a Cisco device in your computer. How to configure the console connection. In the last chapter, I have explained what is the concept of a console. What is a console connection? So if you didn't watch that video, then watch it first so that you can understand what is a console connection. So basically saying the console connection means creating a physical connection to the console port of the device. And by using that connection, we can manage the device using the command line interface. So how can we configure the console connection in your computer? To configure the console connection in your computer, there are some steps you need to follow. The step number one, create a console connection physically between your Cisco device and your laptop or PC. So how to create a console connection physically? For that, you need to connect the console cable and the USB to serial converter between the laptop and the device. For example, you have a network device, a router. You need to access the console window of this network switch for the configuration. So how to do that thing? To access the console window of this network router, you need to have a laptop or a PC. Because this is where you are going to access the console connection and enter the command for the configuration. Now you have your network device, the router and the laptop. What else is required? You need one console cable, which is also called rollover cable and you need one USB to serial converter. Now how to connect this console cable and USB to serial converter between your laptop and the network device. For that you need to attach them together and connect that to the console port of the device which you can see in red circle. So how to identify the console port? It is very simple. You can see in that interface it is written console. In addition to that, you can identify the console port with its color. Nowadays, in Cisco devices, the console port is showing in light blue color. From that also you can identify. And it is look like an Ethernet port, but actually it is not providing any network connectivity to the device. Now, how to connect the console connection? For that, consider this is your network device. It may be as network switch, router, firewall, WLC, anything. And this is your laptop that you are going to access the console window. So as we said, you need a console cable. So what is a console cable? Console cable is a rollover cable that is using to get the console connection. So what is the connectors at the console cable? In console cable, one side is a serial interface and the other side is RJ45. Serial interface is also called DB9 interface. It is a nine pin connectors. So you need to connect the RJ45 connector to the console port of the network device. Now what else is required? In addition to this console cable, you need one USB to serial adapter. In USB to serial adapter, one side is a serial interface and the other side is USB. So this USB part you need to connect to your computer and the serial interface you need to attach to the serial interface of the console cable. Now I am going to attach the serial interface of the console cable into the serial interface of the USB to serial adapter. Then the USB connected to the laptop USB port. So this is how we connect a console connection between the laptop and the network switch. 
Now let me show you what is a console cable is. This is the console cable. This is also called the rollover cable. One side of the cable you can see the serial interface, female type and the other side you can see the RJ45 connector. This serial interface connector is also called DB9 connector and here you can see NAN connection interface are available here. This RJ45 connector is the one that we are going to plug into the console port of the network switch. And you can see same like a network cable, 8 wires are available inside this RJ45 connector. This 8 wires are connected to the 8 connectors of the serial interface in a rollover form. That's why this is called rollover cable. Now let me show you a USB to serial converter. As you can see one side of this converter is a serial interface and the other side is a USB interface. This serial interface will go to the serial interface of the console cable and the USB interface will go to the USB port of the computer. Now as we said the first step to get the console connection you need to attach this USB connector of the USB to serial adapter into the USB port of your laptop like this. Then install the driver software if needed. Next step is you need to attach the serial interface of console cable and USB to serial adapter together to make the connectivity between them. Now I am going to take a console access to the Cisco access point. Here I am using this access point to take the console connection. To access the console connection I am going to attach the RJ45 connector of my console cable to the console port of the Cisco access point. Just plug in the cable into the console port of the access point. The left side you can see another network cable which is the power over ethernet cable that I use to give the power to this access point. Now how to access the console of the network device? To access the console of the network device you need to follow the step number 2 which is download a terminal program. We have talked about this terminal program in the previous chapter. You can watch that for more information. Anyway I will tell you in simple way what is a terminal program. Terminal program is a program that allow you to interact with the computer and the connected devices in the form of commands. So what are the commonly using terminal programs? There are several terminal programs are available. However, there are some popular terminal programs that are used in the industry. Those are Putty, Teratem and Secure CRT. Here the Putty is an open source application. It is available for free. You can download it from internet without paying any charge. Then another application is Teratem that also you can download from internet. Then the Secure CRT. Secure CRT is a paid application. It provides more feature than the Putty and Teratem. You can access multiple windows in Secure CRT. You can run the script in the Secure CRT, but it is costly. So initially you don't want to buy the Secure CRT as a beginner. You can use the Putty. And once if you become a professional that manage multiple devices at the same time, then you can go with the Secure CRT because it provides more options, which will help you in your networking journey. I have already installed the Putty application in my computer. If you don't know how to install the Putty application, watch my previous video. There I have mentioned clearly how to install the Putty application in your computer. So in the Putty, you can see different connection types such as SSH, CDL and others. SSH connection types are using to access the device remotely over the network. Here we have to select the CDL option because we are going to connect this device physically via a CDL adapter. So here I am going to select the option CDL and as soon as I select I got a default interface name called COM1. So I am going to connect to the COM1 interface then click open. Boom! You got an error message. What is it saying? It is saying that there is a problem occurred while opening the COM port 1 because the system cannot find the file specified. Why it is like that? It happened because I used a wrong communication port. In some computer, as soon as you plug in the USB serial converter, it automatically detect and install the driver for that converter. But in some computer, it is not happening. You need to manually download and install the driver to use the USB to serial adapter. So let's see this computer detect the converter and install the driver or not. For that, you need to go to the device manager and in device manager let's maximize the device manager and once the device manager is open just search for the communication port here 
here i cannot see any communication port so there is something called other devices just go here and usb 2 so this is the usb to serial adapter that we plug into the computer but unfortunately in this computer it didn't install the driver this device is showing as unknown so in that situation we need to download and install the driver manually so how to install the driver manually first of all you need to find out the driver for that you need to right click in the unknown device go to properties then go to details from the list select the hardware id so here you can see the hardware id value here so this is the driver description you need to download this driver and install it so here i have already downloaded the driver here so this is the downloaded driver let's install and see what is happening so i'm going to install it so it is asking to install just click install now the driver installation is successful now close this and see is the computer detected our adapter or not see look at that under the port you can see the usb to serial adapter so this is how you install the driver for the usb to serial adapter now we can use this adapter for the communication now the computer already installed the driver and it can communicate with the device which is connected to the adapter it is also allowed to change the port number of your communication port for that you need to right click on the com port then go to properties then select the port settings from there go to advanced option then from there you can choose the required port number from here then press ok so the new port number will be assigned to your com port then you can use that port number in the putty configuration now for the question which connection type and port will be used you need to follow the step number three step number three is identify your communication port number so how to identify your communication port number to identify the communication port number you can go to device manager in your computer and find out which port is assigned to usb to serial adapter and the same port number you need to use in putty screen if your usb to serial adapter detected as communication port 1 then you need to use the same port number in the putty if it is detected as com port 5 then you need to use com port 5 in the putty screen so you have to use the right serial lane interface number then only it match with the communication port that you have connected then the access the console properly otherwise your computer get wrong signal and your attempt will be end up with an error message this is how you identify your communication port number and use the right port in the terminal program to access the console before you access the console connection of a network device you need to consider one thing the serial port speed so what is the serial port speed the serial port speed means it is the speed of the data that is going and coming through the serial interface it has to match with the device side speed then only you will get the proper display and data communication otherwise there will be a lot of disturbance and noise in your console window so there are some commonly used serial speed which are 9600 38400 57600 and 115200 so what is the importance of the serial speed you might have seen some console window with some kind of disturbance and noise as shown in the picture this is happened because of the mismatch in the serial speed if you see this kind of picture you don't want to panic and think there is something issue with your network device or the network device is faulty you need to adjust the proper serial speed so that you will get the proper console window 9600 is the default serial speed that support most of the device so you can use it as it is in the case of it is not working for you you need to choose the other serial speed the commonly using serial speeds are 9600 and 115200 and most of the devices support this 9600 so you can use that now i have used the right port number and the right port speed in my putty configuration and when I open the console, I cannot see anything. It is just blank page because there is no signal coming from the device. Why it is like that? Because I didn't switch on the access point. The access point is still in off state. That's why there is no signal. So I am going to switch on the access point now. 
and let's see what is happening as you can see the screen i didn't connect the poe cable into the access point now i am going to connect the poe cable so that the access point can get power from the network switch and it can boot up i have connected the cable now as soon as i switch on the access point you can see the console window started showing display because it is getting the signal from the access point now you can see the booting process of the access point you can see all the process what are the file loading what are the message it is displaying you can see in the console window now let's wait till the access point boot completely now you can see the access point is completely boot up now i can enter the user id and password to log into the switch so i can get the access to the switch console and from now onwards i can enter the command different different command and configure the access point in a way that i wanted so i have show you how to access the console window of a network device and how to configure the console access in your laptop or pc using the console cable and usb to serial adapter now let's discuss about an additional tip of accessing the console connection in case if you want to access the console of more than one devices using one single console cable then you can swap easily the console connection between the devices by removing and plug into the next device so in this picture you can see there are four network switches switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 and switch 4 in case if you want to take the console connection of the switch 1 you need to attach the console cable into the switch 1 console port so you get access to the switch 1 console then if you have done the configuration with the switch 1 you can simply swap the console connection to the next one that is the switch 2 then you get the switch 2 console in the same way you can connect that to the switch 3 then you get the switch 3 console same for switch 4 also you can simply swap the console cable to the console port of the switch 4 then you get switch 4 console connection so here you don't want to unplug anything at the laptop side you don't want to close the terminal program and reopen it you just need to swap the rj45 connector of the console cable across the multiple network devices then just simply press the enter button so you get the console connection of the connected device without making any changes in your laptop or the pc in this chapter we have explained how to configure a console connection to a cisco device in your computer i have show you this process with a practical example thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel for more videos enhance your skills using irash academy